Thomas Aquinas and here as uh, Latham develops it says we should we should use a different way of thinking about our language for God and that is to think of it as an analogy sometimes we speak about the analogy of faith in theology or we speak about um, the analogy of being uh, an analogy is something that's kind of like something else. Now, univocal and equivocal are adjectives. If you wanted an adjective for analogy, then you would say analogous, right? But we'll, we'll talk about language about God as analogy because to say that God, to say something that we can say with confidence about God, such as God is good, doesn't mean that we're using the word good the way we always would. You know, for me, if I want something good to eat, um, at the top of the list, I want a peach. Somewhere near there, a tomato. And uh, a peach is really good. Now, when I call a peach good, I'm not saying exactly the same thing as when I say God is good. In fact, there are many shades of what we mean by good when we refer to uh, our experiences other than speaking about God. You know, we might say that, you know, the, the Blue Devils are a good basketball team or the Tar Heels are a good basketball team or the Wolf Pack's a good basketball team. I got all my bases covered for your ACC fans. And um, that's not the same thing that we're saying about God. Um, we, we might um, uh, like, well, there's a funny story about my son. When he was about six, uh, it was time for the presidential election, and it was Bill Clinton running against George Bush the first. And... Um, that my son said, you know, I, I remember thinking, well, I should support Bush because he's already the president. And, and if he's already been the president, then he would be a good president next. And he asked his little friend at school, Christina, who did she support? And she said, well, I'm for Bill Clinton. And he was surprised and he asked her why. And she said, because he looked good. Now, when we say he looked good, we're not saying the same thing as we say uh, when we say God is good. And so our language is not univocal, but it's not equivocal either. And so when we say good about a peach, there is maybe a slight analogy to God in sort of the fullness and richness and beauty of who God is in creating, you know, such, uh, um, such uh, a potentiality for pleasure and enjoyment in creation. But more fully, when we say, for instance, that um, Medgar Evers was a good man, well, maybe we're saying something closer in analogy to what we mean when we say that God is good. Uh, when we say that um, the, the work of, uh, of a congregation in helping prisoners find jobs after they come out of prison is good, we're, we're, close, we're close in many ways to what we mean about God being good. And so what we see in the nature of analogy is the words we use about God um, have a kind of precedence over our everyday use. Uh, in a sense, to say something is good is always secondary to saying what it means that God is good. Um, we can also speak about, you know, the greatness of God, the, um, the love of God. And so if I, if I love a peach, if I, if I love um, 
my favorite sports team, if I love my wife, all of these are different kinds of uses of that word. But when we speak of God's love, it's not exactly any of those. And uh, yet, when we speak about, uh, say, how we describe a loving act of caring for someone, of, of looking out for their good, then we see the, the inflow of the nature of God into what the concept of love might mean in the rest of our lives. Now he concludes then, taking up that title, God is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic, in trying to help you see how those words first speak about God, but then speak about our life as the people of God. And so when we speak about God, we speak in a, in a way that not only describes the one whom we worship, but describes in a normative way what God's purpose is for us. In that sense, it seems to me a good way of describing what Latham is doing in the rest of the chapter is saying that the church becomes, is called to be and can become the very words of God uh, in, in the world where we live. And so God speaks our existence that we might be uh, the bearers of his character, uh, the exemplars of his nature in the world where we live. We always do so analogously, never univocally, but we're not unavoidably um, utter failures and equivocal either. Instead, in analogy, we become uh, the nature of God uh, by receiving uh, the work of the Son and the Spirit sent into the world uh, that we might be who God calls us to be. All right, I hope that's helpful in, in uh, wrapping up the book God is Not, and uh, I'll see you soon.